All right, it's time for a weekly review sheet. All right, so we had some questions that were problematic from the Le Chatelier puzzle piece. So here's the first one that was problematic. So given this equation, what occurs when Na2SO4 is added to this system, increasing the concentration of SO4 to negative? Okay, so let's go through it. So what I want to do is it says Na2SO4 is added to the system, but it then gives me this bit of information that increases the concentration of SO4 to negative. So where do I see that? Right here. So I am increasing this concentration. Now, according to Le Chatelier's principle, when you increase the concentration of something or decrease or whatever, you do something to stress the equilibrium. The equilibrium will always respond in a way to relieve the stress to make it better. So if the stress is I have too much SO4, right? How do I have to resolve that? I have to use up some of this SO4, because the system is like, this is too much, okay? Now I'm gonna draw a line here to separate the two sides of the equation to show you what I'm talking about. So if I have to use some of this SO4 up to resolve that stress, okay? Anything else that is on the same side as SO4 will also go down. So BA2 plus is on the same side. So it will also go down as the equilibrium resolves the stress, okay? And then anything on the opposite side, which is BA2SO4, will increase, okay? So which way will the equilibrium shift, okay? The equilibrium will shift toward the side where it's increasing. So the equilibrium will shift in this direction. It needs to go toward the thing that's increasing because when the equilibrium shifts this way, I use up this, that's what I wanted to do. I use up this, that's what I wanted to do. And I make this, that's what I wanted to do. So which way is the equilibrium shifting? To the left, that means this is wrong and this is wrong. Okay, the next part says, what's happening to the concentration of Ba2 plus aqueous? Well, what's happening to it? We already did that. It is decreasing. So there we go. Here's another question about equilibrium and Le Chatelier's principle. It says, if the temperature is decreased. Okay, so I got to go to the equation. Again, draw a line to separate the two sides. Find what in the equation represents temperature. Well, that's this kilocalories of heat. What was happening to the temperature? It is decreasing. So now think about it in terms of Le Chatelier. If the stress is the temperature is going down, how do I resolve the stress? I make the temperature go up. And then everything on the same side as the temperature will follow the same pattern. So if temperature had to go up to release the stress, O2 had to go up to release the stress. H2 had to go up to release the stress. And now when I switch to the other side, that means H2 would have to go down to relieve the stress. Now, which way will the equilibrium shift, which this is what the question is asking, it will shift toward the side that the um, concentrations are going up to relieve the stress. So the equilibrium is going to shift in this direction. Why? Because in, when we go in this direction, we use this up to make this and make this and make this. So that direction is the right, so it shifts to the right, or to the product side. All right, and another Le Chatelier question. This one is about pressure, and this one we have to do a little bit differently, okay? So let's separate the two sides of the equation, right? And I have to look for everything that's a gas because that matters, all right? So this is a gas, there's four moles. I look at the coefficient in front. This is a gas, has no coefficient, but that's a one. So that's a four plus one, that's a five. On this side, that's a gas, it's two plus, that's a gas, it's two, so that side has four moles of gas, okay? 
So there are two situations. We could have a big container or a little container. If we have a big container, that is big volume, but low pressure. And if we have a little container, that is little volume, but high pressure, okay? So it says, if the pressure is decreased, what is that? That's this big giant container. What's, what fits better in a bigger container? The bigger number. So that's this one. Okay, so the equilibrium will shift this way toward the bigger number. So it will shift to the left or to the reactant side. Now I have to decide what happens in that case. Well, remember with the previous questions, when the equilibrium shifts to the left, I use this up, I use this up, I make this, and I make this. I make the things on the side I'm shifting to. Okay, so what happens to the amount of Cl2 produced? It will decrease. All right, now let's look at a question from the mole ratio puzzle piece, just to make sure we understand this completely. Now, the issue from this one was still the conservation of mass, the law of conservation of mass or matter, okay? What this law says is when we compare both sides of the equation, the mass on the reactant side, so the mass of everything over here, must equal the mass of everything over here. Okay, so you can see here I have 13.2 grams of this, 12 grams of this, and 18.4 grams of this. I put them in the equation where they belong, so I have 18. 0.4 grams of this, uh, PBNO3, I have 13.2 grams of this, and I have 12.0 grams of NAI. So this, I know, there's two of these things. This is what I'm trying to find, right? The mass of NaNO3, that's an X. I can set these two equal to each other because I know reactants equals products and then I solve the equation. Whatever I'm trying to find is the X. So in order to solve this, I would add these two terms together, right? So that will give me 0.25, 25.2 equals 18.4 plus X. And then how do I solve for X? I subtract 18.4 from both sides, and that will give me the answer. So that is how you solve this problem, okay? Don't make it more complicated, all right? So just set it up like a very simple algebraic expression. What you know on this side, right, for mass has to be equal to the mass on this side, and then just set it up like an equation. Wherever the plus sign is, I should see a plus up here. Wherever the plus sign is here, I should see a plus right here. Okay. All right, now let's look at the questions from equilibrium rates and catalysts, okay? So here's the first one. Catalysts can increase the rate of a chemical reaction by providing. All right, so let's look at an example. So here is a potential energy diagram with and without a catalyst. So here is no catalyst, right? I follow this path from reactants down to products. And then with the catalyst, it looks almost the same, right? I start the same and end the same, but notice this represents activation energy. The activation energy with the catalyst is less, okay? So how do they increase the rate of a chemical reaction? Do they provide the same pathway? No, literally, they're not. So there's not the same pathway. And is the activation energy higher or lower? It is lower, that's what makes it go faster. It takes less energy, okay? All right, the greatest increase in entropy occurs when a 1.00 gram sample of water changes from. Now it's talking about states of matter, right? First, let's review what entropy is. Entropy is disorder or randomness, okay? The universe in general favors high entropy, a lot of disorder. Why? Because the universe also favors low energy and it takes effort, work, energy to put things back in order. So the universe always favors high entropy and low energy, all right? Now let's talk about the states of matter. Let's look over here at gases. 
Look at that disorder, high entropy. And look at the solid, very ordered, low entropy. So when would something experience the greatest increase in entropy? Well, it has to be moving toward a gas, right? Uh, it has to be moving this way, right? It has to be going this way in order for entropy to increase. So solid to liquid is following that way. Solid to gas is following that way. Gas to liquid is going the wrong way. It's becoming more ordered. And liquid to solid is also becoming more ordered. So where would the, be, there be more increase in entropy going from solid all the way to gas or from solid just to liquid? Yeah, from solid to gas would be the greatest. All right, which equation represents a physical equilibrium? So remember, there's lots of things that are true about equilibrium. Closed container, dynamic, reversible, rates are equal, concentrations are constant. But what does a physical equilibrium mean? Well, let's look at the difference between physical and chemical equilibrium. So in a physical equilibrium, there are two phases, but the same substance. Look, H2O, H2O. That just means it's changing its phase, like it's freezing or it's melting or it's evaporating. It's subliming something. In a chemical equilibrium, it involves a chemical reaction. So we have two or more different substances. So the chemical formulas are not the same on both sides. So I'm looking for a physical equilibrium. That means I should see exactly the same chemical formulas on both sides. Okay, so let's look and which one has, look right here. All this is, is a change of phase. Same chemical formula, just different phases. All right, let's go over some questions from this Castle Learning assignment. All right, so the first one uh, that I wanna go over is about finding percent composition by mass uh, in this hydrate, okay? It says, I'm going to skip all the reading at first. I'm going to go to the question. It says, determine the percent composition by mass of water in the hydrated CuSO4 sample based on the data for student one. So I know it says percent composition by mass, so I know I need this formula. Okay. So what else? Well, let's give ourselves a little bit of a work area. That's the formula I know I need. And all I need here is from this table, the data for student one. So that is what I'm gonna focus on. So I need the mass of the part. So what was I asked to find the percent composition by mass of? Water. So that means water is the part, okay? Um, the hydrate, is the whole thing, right? So the mass of the water divided by the mass of the hydrate times 100, okay? So let's look at student one's data because that's where my numbers have to come from. So this is the mass of the hydrated. This is the mass of the water. They literally even did the math for me. I don't even have to do the math. Normally, they only give you these two numbers, like the mass of the hydrate and then the mass of the hydrate after heating it, and I'd have to subtract them to get this but I already have those numbers. So I would just do 1.02, that's the mass of the water, divided by 3.00, that's the mass of the hydrate, times 100. And that will give me my answer, okay? This is how you find the mass of water in a hydrate when we wanna find percent composition. All right, let's look at this question. Given their equation representing a reaction, which statement describes the energy change that occurs in this reaction? So first, let's review that a little bit. So when we're talking about reactions, when bonds are broken, we have to add energy in. So in any reaction, we're adding energy in at first, and so we're breaking bonds. And then bonds will form, and then the uh, energy is being released. Okay, overall in a reaction where we got lots of stuff happening. So we break bonds, add energy in, and when we form bonds, energy is released. So breaking bonds is endothermic, forming bonds is exothermic. When I look at this reaction, I see that in order for this to happen, I'd have to break the bond between H and H, 
break the bond between I and I, and then form the bond between H and I twice. So this has a mix of breaking and forming bonds. So just by looking at it, I'm not expected to know what the energy change is. So how would I find out? Well, you need to go to table I, which talks about energy changes in reactions. And then when you scroll down, you're gonna find, oh look, there is HI, right? And look at this, huh? And if you look at the bottom of table I, it says a minus sign indicates an exothermic reaction. So that means the energy change in this reaction is endothermic. And our final question is, given this uh, equation, what kind of reaction is it? Well, what are the types of reactions possible? Now, unless it says organic reaction, which this one does not, these are the only possibilities, okay? So we have synthesis, where we start with two separate things, and then we make one thing where they're combined, we build. There's decomposition, where we start with one thing, and then we break it apart, we break it down into two separate things, okay? There's single replacement, where we have compound element, and then on the other side, we also have an element, but it's different, and then we have a compound. So we have element and compound, and then element and compound. We have a single element on both sides. And then for doubles, this is like, you know, double dating. We have two compounds on this side and two compounds on this side. Everything is doubled up. So let's look at our equation. Well, I have two things on this side and two things on this side. As soon as I have that, I know my only possibilities are single replacement and double replacement. So that means these are wrong. Now let's look. Is everything a compound? No, it is not. Look, that is not a compound. That is not a compound. Although it has a subscript, it's still an element because both of the atoms are fluorine on that side and both of the atoms are chlorine on the other side. So this is single replacement.